How's it going guys and welcome back to another episode of the AFC Wimbledon Road to Glory career mode. This is going to be episode number 24 of this series now and before we do get into anything, I want to thank you guys as always once again for all the support that you gave on the last episode. In this episode we're going to try and get through the whole of November, we've got a lot of games to cover. I am planning though to sim a couple of these games just because it's just too many games, it really is. And even in December, there's quite a lot of games still. So I'm probably going to play four games, simulate two games, and that will be how we're doing it. And we've got the first game of the episode here coming up against Colchester. Before we do get into the first game, though, we do see here that George Francoum is demanding more wages. So I may have to give him a new contract. We've also got Baxendale as well. Currently, we don't really have the budget to do that, but I will just check how much they actually want first because... They may not want too much, so that may be alright for me to increase. And Baxendale, he wants an extra of £400. I can deal with that. He's been a good player, and I will go ahead and give him this contract. However, I do have a feeling that Frank Coombe is going to want a lot more. And there you have it, 2.1 grand a week. No way am I giving that to him. So we have offered a contract to Baxendale, but we haven't offered a contract to Frank Coombe. And now we're going to the first game of the episode, coming up here against Colchester in the J-Paint Trophy. Obviously, I do know a lot about Colchester. I did try and sign their striker, who, well, obviously Marvin Sordell right there on your screen. Instead, though, we've got a Yama that looked to be a better deal, and it's turning out to be because he's been in good form. And let's hope he can continue that in this game. I forgot to mention as well, I'm putting Joe Sears into the starting lineup, so he's going to be making his debut in this game. In the J-Paint Trophy, hopefully can do quite well in this game. And not really the best pass. And it's Ambrose on the ball, trying to cut inside, getting the pass in. And that is a good save. That is a good first save there from Sears. Very good stuff with that one. Getting it through very nicely here. Now it's Barkham on the ball, trying to get it through. Oh, that, that slide tackle right at the end there really did prevent that from being a goal for sure. And they get it in here to Sordell. And Sordell may look to get the cross in and does. And Gilby ends up scoring there. What an effort that was as well. Can't really believe that's happened, to be honest. The marking there was terrible. And maybe that's because I dragged a few players out of position. But the finish is really good. You can't deny that. And it's Yama playing it forward to Armstrong here. Can he find a way back into the game for us? He keeps on going. He keeps on going. And he keeps on going and has a shot. And that is disappointing. How do you get through all of those players and then have such a poor shot? Ayama cutting inside. He gets taken down. It's a penalty, I think. Yes, it is. Out of nothing, we haven't had any chances in this game. And all of a sudden, we get given a penalty. This is huge pressure. It's going to be Ayama stepping up to take this one. We're going to go top left. Keeper saves it. Keeper saves it. I'm, I'm absolutely... I can't... How have we been knocked out of the J-Paint trophy like that? Seriously. I don't understand it. Like, we we did well in the game. We certainly deserve to get something out of it. That goddamn keeper saved the penalty even though it was pinpoint perfect. So our realistic chance of getting some silverware this season in the J-Paint trophy is now diminished. And we're not going to be winning it this season now that we've been knocked out. Baxendale has decided to go ahead and accept his contract, so that is very good. We've got to play a player conversation. Tunga wants to play, probably will end up playing him in this next game. And that game in particular is going to be against Chesterfield. I am playing Tunga in this game, and we've changed a few players in the lineup after that loss in the J Paint Trophy. Roy Silver's back in goal as well. Hopefully, he will have a bit of a better game than Sears. It wasn't his fault that we lost in that last game. But I certainly think that Roy Silver does do a bit of a better job in goal, at least for the moment, anyway. Oh, look, look at that. That is a pinpoint perfect pass. And now it's going to be Armstrong on the ball. Taking it away. And trying to find a really good pass to Ayama. That wasn't Ayama, that was Reeves. That explains the poor finish. Oh, Ayama, that's really good. Really good play. He's won it back here in a good position. And we're going to keep on going and have a shot. And it's saved, but it's put into the back of the net by Puccini. And that goal, well, didn't even see a replay there. Not sure why. But Yama had the shot originally. And then Puccini puts it in to the back of the net. Easy as you like from our scout future star. And there you have it. That's his second goal in Football League 1. 
Certainly seems to be doing a little bit better at getting into good positions compared to Billy King at Cam. Somehow we got a corner out of that one. Don't know why he took it out of play. 49 minutes gone here. We're going to get the cross in. It's going to be with Barkham. Decent enough delivery. And a really good header. And it's Cargill who is replacing Tom Lockyer in this game. Getting himself a goal. A very good header from the corner. And he certainly made his mark in Tom Lockyer's absence. A very, very good header. Not really sure why he's not marked properly. And maybe the goalkeeper could have done a bit better with it. But it's a good header regardless. Tyler Walker on the ball now. Trying to spread it out wide. Not the best pass. But here goes Baxendale trying to feed it over the top. And it's a good ball. And look at that for a touch. That is incredible. That's got to be one of the goals of the season so far. Oh, man. I can't wait to watch this back. You look at this. Baxendale with a pinpoint perfect ball almost. The header, I think that was from the defender it might have been. We'll have a little look from the replay. I don't think we can see. But look at that for a bullet header from Armstrong. Great stuff and a brilliant way to score. And we've won it back again here with Reeves. We're going to play it out wide. And here goes Ayama. I could pass it in, but I'm going to keep on going. And keep on going and then have a shot at the end of it. And Ayama makes it 4-0. And it's just as simple as that. When the AI are tired... And they just have no effort left in the 90th minute. It's very easy once you've got a lead to go on and score some more goals. And there you have it. An emphatic 4-0 victory. And that leaves the home crowd a little bit stunned with that performance. Probably didn't expect that from their side. But we get a 4-0 win. A clean sheet. And certainly a great way to bounce back from a cup loss. And we get some very good results from that session. Miranda's now up to a 65 Done very well there with his growth. He's only 15 and already 65. That really does still baffle me. And now we have the next game here against Sheffield United. And obviously this is going to be in the league. But I will be simming this game. And this is the side we will be going with for this game. Of course we're still playing pretty much the same players from the last game. We just got King and Baxendale coming back into the lineup as well as Grimes. And we're coming up against Sheffield United currently 7th. Not really too sure how they've done in their previous games, but we're going to skip. We get a 1-0 result, and it's Bree that ends up scoring late on there. Lockyer came off the bench and got a, himself a red card, so that's a bit of a disappointment. But now we have some more player training. But we do go ahead and see there that Tunga is now a 64 overall, which is brilliant news. Obviously, like I did say a minute ago, I think he will take over Jenkins' position. And I really do have good hopes for him for the future. He's only 18 still. And now it's time for the next game of the episode. It's going to be against Plymouth here in the league. Plymouth got promoted last season with us through the playoffs, I believe. Hansen is also coming back into the right back position. He's rotating with Bree quite a lot recently. But that's lower league players for you. They don't really have the best stamina. Not really sure what happened there. But King's going to get it over the top. And Ayama's won it somehow. He's going to keep on going. And he's cutting inside and that's going to be a penalty only six minutes into the game. And we're going to take this one to the top right corner. And this time it does beat the goalkeeper. He does go the right way but this time we do score the penalty. And that's Armstrong with his 11th goal so far this season. Very, very impressive player so far. I knew it was a risk bringing him to the club but he's proven to be a very good player so far. Good turn there from Ruben Reed and a really good save by Roy Silva, but he was offside. How on earth is that not a foul? Here goes Jervis getting it inside to carry you as a shot. That is ridiculous. I honestly, I am, I, I don't understand how that's a goal. I really don't. That should have been pulled back for a foul. Kennedy here out muscled on the ball. Surely that's a foul. I just think of that as a foul straight away. Maybe it isn't and maybe I'm being a little bit... A little bit narrow-minded, but still, Kerry gets the goal, and they equalise. They don't deserve that. They've equalised out of nothing, really. But here we go, getting it through to Armstrong, and he, here he goes, turning round the defender and having a shot, and again, it's another goal for Armstrong. This guy is just insane. Oh, Armstrong, he's won it really well there. He keeps on going. Don't think he's going to have the strength though. So we're going to have to play it back. And that was the worst touch ever. But here comes Tunga. And that was a really good effort. And that could have been his first goal there for AFC Wimbledon. So we end up winning that 1-2-1. One, one, a very good result. And I think we did deserve to get the three points in that game. Only a narrow victory though over our, well, League 2 
opposition or former League 2 opposition side, Plymouth. And now we have a youth squad monthly report. So we will take a little look at this one. And we can possibly see any players that have grown. Obviously, Gabriel Miranda, we're training him currently. And he's still 4 for 8. Hopefully, he does grow. Dion Clark, a possible player that we could promote. Does look okay. I mean, we could train him. The good thing about this guy is, though, he, he does have good physical stats. I will offer him a contract, and we'll have to wait and see if he does go ahead and accept it. And now we have the next game here against Barry. This is going to be the final game of the episode, and it is one that we are going to go ahead and sim here. We've got a few players coming into the lineup. We've got Walker, Araba. Hopefully, they can do well for themselves. Obviously, Walker's just come back from injury. We end up getting a 1-1 draw from that game. Bree's the one that scores once again in a simulated game. Don't know how he's getting on the score sheet this often, but, you know, another goal for him. That's good. We end up getting a point. And to finish off the episode, we will have one final training session. We'll have to wait and see if we get any good results from this one. And again, we see some good growth there from Miranda, almost halfway through to a 66. Right, guys, so this is going to be the end of this episode of the AFC Wimbledon Road to Glory career mode. And if you have enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. I know it might seem a little bit early, but if you guys can leave a couple of transfer suggestions, mainly pre-contracts, to sign for the next season in the comments down below, then I will be open to suggestions more so now than I will be a little bit later on down the line. So make sure you leave your suggestions in the comments down below. But apart from that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.